What time is it? There's nobody here. Wow, we're on Pacific time. It's all a little early, which gives us three extra hours. I, I didn't set my watch back. <laughs> this must be extra time. It must be extra time. <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm Greg Lawless, and welcome to Extra Time alongside Shep Messing, who's just arrived in Los Angeles, to join me here at the Home Depot Center. We're here all weekend long for the MLS Cup Final between the Columbus Crew and the New York Red Bulls. Shep, it's going to be a fantastic game, isn't it? Yeah, awesome venue. The weather's beautiful. I think Columbus expected to be here for the final. Red Bull, the unexpected, should have a dramatic game. It should be good. And we're going to take this first show to look at the Columbus Crew. They're the Supporters' Shield winners, and obviously they've had a fantastic season. But Shep, it's, it's been a long time coming to this. It's been a good three-year process. What has Columbus done to get to this moment? Well, Greg, good point. And, and start and end with Siggy Schmidt, mm -hmm. because in sports in general, Major League Soccer in particular, the tendency is a knee-jerk reaction. You don't win, fire the coach, blow up the team, start all over. So kudos to the Columbus Crew organization. Siggy Schmidt had in his mind a three-year plan. Didn't work out in year number one. Last year, some progress, but decimated by injuries. Didn't work out. And many times you'd expect that he'd get fired. So they're getting the just reward for having confidence in Siggy Schmidt. Spectacular year for him, and he, he's been able to build the parts. He's th the parts have certainly come together. Obviously, he brought in Guillermo Barrascolotto for the 2007 season, and now in 2008, MVP just announced this week. He also had Chad Marshall, who was sort of out of it the last couple of years. This year, defender of the year, got into his head a little bit. You know, Ziggy helping him out, getting him to be a good player. What are some of the other parts that have impressed you in the building of this? Well, I, I always start in the goal, and you and I talked about it early in the season. I like Will Hesmer. You do? Okay. Yeah, and Will right. Hesmer has shown to be a very good goalkeeper. Still got to do it in the biggest game of his life coming up Sunday. He's young. I mean, the, the experience is going to be an issue on Sunday. Yeah, well, look at the other end of Danny Sapero. That's so true. Will Hesmer, he's got the physical tools. He's shown his ability during the year. I think he'll do fine in the final. But what's interesting to me when we talk about Ziggy adding, mixing, matching, adding pieces, a year ago, he told me, you know, I'm really looking for a left back. And I said, Ziggy, you know, a left back. I mean, that's got to be your last priority. Right. He knew what he was talking about. Brought in Padula. Now you look at Padula on the left, Frankie Hayduck on the right. A lot of hair on both sides. Yeah, a lot of hair. But those guys <laughs> both can play. Yeah. Tough, aggressive, defend 1v1. They both have the ability to get forward. So he has really put together a very balanced team. And, of course, right in front of each of those, you have very young, talented players in Eddie Gavin on the right side, Robbie Rogers on the, on the left side. And I think he, he did a fantastic job to bring in Brian Carroll, who has shored up everything in the midfield for them. That's pretty much how Columbus has done it, putting the pieces together, and now they're into their first MLS Cup final. Well, now that he's put this team together, Ziggy Schmidt, of course, has to get them to play in a certain way, Shep. And, and what is it the way that this team plays? How are they as a team from a style standpoint, strategy, and tactics? Hey, Greg, I love the team, but they're a little bit atypical. When you talk about a team, a championship team, you usually talk about the spine. Tremendous central defender, tremendous defensive midfielder, attacking midfielder, striker. Right. This Columbus team is really atypical. I think their strength is out wide. You start at the back. Hayduk on one side, Padula on the other. Then in the midfield, two great wide young midfielders, Eddie Gavin, Robbie Rogers. Alejandro Moreno, I love him, but he's not Juan Pablo Angel. So it's, it, it's a balanced team, but not typical of how you build a championship team. Well, it's team. true, except they also look at it and say that that width on the outside and Moreno up top, one of the things that that does is it creates that space in the middle to allow Guillermo Barroscoloto to operate in, in the center spaces. And, and he seemed to find that space. I mean, 19 assists on the season, that's amazing. And the most since 2000 when Carlos Valderrama had 26. And I think a lot of that comes from everyone else on the outsides are drawing the other team out and allowing him to work. Yeah, I think you're totally right. I mean, the, the strength of their wide play leaves room for Scalotto to work his magic. Now, Scalotto, he's not going to beat you on the dribble. Right. He's not a physical player. He's not going to run by you. But much like Blanco, he's got that, that soccer IQ where right. he could find a seam, find a space in the field, spray the ball around. And you're right, the whiff that Eddie Gavin and and Robbie Rogers and Hayduk and Padula give them, that leaves more room for Scalotta in the middle. Well, the other thing that these guys do so well for in Columbus is, of course, the set pieces. I mean, Scalotto can hit a good free kick and a good corner kick, and then you have guys like Chad Marshall in the middle there who are, are getting into it. I don't think there's any question. You know, you look at, at, at 
Probably 30% of all the goals scored in soccer come from set pieces. So who would you rather have on the ball other than Scalotto looking up? You know, he's got the vision. He's got the technical skill on the ball. Chad Marshall having a career year, defender of the year. So he's a great target. They have other good targets. Moreno deceptively good in the air. So yeah. they're a dangerous team on set pieces. They're dangerous in the run of play. Well, that's how they work. Will it work against New York, though? So the Red Bulls team going up against Columbus is not a bad team right now. Obviously, a lot of unity right there with all the wins in the playoffs. Danny Sapero, a hot young goalkeeper that they've got there. And, of course, Juan Pablo Angel, arguably the most dangerous striker in MLS right now. I think the key for Columbus, Craig, because you talked about New York, they're going to sit six, seven, eight guys behind the ball. The key for Columbus in this championship game, they've got to be aggressive, but they've got to be patient. They really can't panic. They've got to use the width of the field. They've got to get the ball to Scalotto, let him find the seams, because again, New York's, I think, going to sit back, defend, look to counterattack. So Columbus got to play hard. They've got to be patient. They can't get frustrated. Well, tactically, they have to be very smart, especially because they have to watch out for the counterattack. When New York sits back and Dane Richards, with all that speed, zooming out of the right side, and he'll be looking, of course, for Juan Pablo on hell in the middle on the cross. Well, you talk about this Columbus team. I think they're the most balanced team from front to back in the league. They deserve to be here. But you've talked about a matchup I think is critical for Columbus. They have Eddie Gavin on the right side. They have Robbie Rogers on the left side. Those two guys are going to be facing Dane Richards and Dave Vandenberg. If Robbie Rogers and Eddie Gavin can attack, they're going to force Dane Richards and Vandenberg to defend. They don't and want to allow And vice versa, of exactly. course, too. If New York is attacking a lot, then Rogers and Gavin are sucked back. Yeah, and the, and the only issue I have for Columbus, if Dane Richards or Vandenberg gets forward, they're going to look for Juan Pablo Angel. And, and don't get me wrong, I love Danny O'Rourke. I love Danny O'Rourke. He's a defensive midfielder for me. Siggy converted him into a central defender. Yeah. He's done a great job. But Juan Pablo Angel against Danny O'Rourke, I think the edge goes to New York. Well, that's probably the only weakness that they have in the defense for Columbus right there. Now, of course, in the attack, they have to start to find Guillermo Barros Scalotto. Well, look, Scalotto is rightfully so the most valuable player in the league. The guy, and I know you love him, Alejandro Moreno. Of course, I, I, how can you not? I mean, this guy, it's hard to call him underrated because everybody knows how good he is. Right. How strong is he on the ball? Yeah. Back to the goal, hold the ball, wait for the runner. He's got the ability to turn and go to goal, but he needs support. Columbus will play four in the back, five in the midfield. Moreno up top alone. He needs Eddie Gavin, Robbie Rogers, Scalotto to join him. Well, speaking of Alejandro Moreno, I was out of practice earlier today and I spoke to him about how Columbus can beat New York. Uh, you're, you're back in LA, you know, uh, obviously you had some great times with the Galaxy here and you're back in the MLS Cup Final and what does that mean to you? It was a very special time for me, it's a very exciting time, obviously for me, for Sigi, for Ezra, guys that have been part of the LA Galaxy organization to come back to LA. Uh, a lot of people that have supported us here uh, are still our friends and uh, Obviously, we got a good, a lot of good relationships here in LA. So again, it's a very special time for for the Columbus Crew organization, certainly for the guys that have ties to LA. We noticed that a lot of you guys have playoff beards going on. How come uh, Scalotto doesn't get a beard? Probably didn't get the memo, but if he did, I don't think he would be able to grow a beard. He's got some patchy stuff going on. It wouldn't be too cute anyway. So, how do you celebrate if you get the win? With my family, most of all, uh, uh, obviously with my wife, my kids, uh, you know, they put up with a lot of stuff that I got to deal with during the season, and certainly with the team, it's been uh, it's been quite an effort for us, and we've we've come a long way, and uh, hopefully we can finish it off on Sunday. And do you see this team staying together again next year? Well, I certainly hope so. I, obviously, the uh, the front office got to do their job. Sigi's got to do got to do his job, and and uh, obviously we think we we got a good core of, of players here that can do a lot of things for for a lot of years and with this organization. Well, that's about all from the Home Depot Center for this afternoon. A little bit later on, we're going to be at the red carpet for the commissioner's party. Tomorrow, we're going to preview the New York Red Bulls, so check it all out. Extra time on MLSNet.com.